but anyways, there was one team that we we love to talk about and um, often quite bad, which, well, sometimes good. Tour de France last year, we praised them a lot. But Israel Premier Tech, they were in the race. You wouldn't really tell if you, well, other than the Froome attack, but they haven't had any victories this year. We know that they're on the fight back now to try and get back into the World Tour. Simon Clark, who was a last minute signing last year, worth every single penny they're paying him. But well, yeah, what's happening with Israel Premier Tech and how are they going to get back to the World Tour? What I think is quite neat is if you go into Israel Premier Tech's website, uh, they have a little ticker in the corner for how many wins they've had this season. And it's currently sitting on zero which I think is sort of it's sort oh, of insulting no. at, at the time of recording. For Israel Premier Tech, you also have, have to sort of factor in the fact that they came to this race. They have a big charity project in Rwanda, uh, which is also why they came to this race and wanted to show their face there, particularly, I think, why Chris Froome was fielded to this race. I, probably he went on his own volition. He says he, he used it as a tune-up race for the Tour de France. Brilliant. For what? What do you what do you what are you tuning up for, Chris? But um he's <laughs> oh, he said the race was good preparation for his goals bash, in July. Bash, bash, as, bash. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's uh it's a uh, yeah, but I am waiting to see what Ugo Ul can bring. He was a real rock of that team last year, getting a lot of solid results, including a Tour de France win. Um so we'll wait and see once we get to Paris Nice, maybe that'll be the turning point. But at the moment, yeah, not quite anything really to write home about. They've got plenty of riders that seem a little bit more sort of promising than their riders over the past couple of years. They've made some solid signings, but we're not quite seeing them firing. I think Miranda would have been a good opportunity for them, but I don't no. know. It, it is also, it's a very different type of race. It's a lot of like dev teams as a national team at this at this kind of race. It probably operates in a very different way to a World Tour race or to a Pro Continental race. The, like the, the ones that, that they are used to right, riding in, in Europe and so forth. So it was probably very, very different for them. Um, and maybe maybe that just didn't click with the riders who just weren't used to it. Yeah, I, just Israel. I feel like they started, you know, once they basically started realizing that last, well, last year, that the relegation thing was a, a thing. But for years since, like prior to that, they've just been signing riders in the twilight of their career, which has been pointed out by multiple people, not just us, that what is the reasoning behind this? Is it that you're trying to kind of hit a rider as they're on like, they're still on the upper slopes of the downward curve, if that makes sense? So it's been a while since Full Sang's really done anything or, or Mike Woods for, for that manner. They've just got a lot of old older riders who are taking up quite a bit of salary space who aren't necessarily bringing in the results. Arguably, I think for their most exciting rider. I mean, yeah, Simon Clark's doing well, but I really like Corbin Strong as well. I think that he's a great rider, just like a very versatile sprinter. He was up there in the like phone Ardesh Classic slide today, or yesterday, the phone Delon Classic. I think he might have been up there. Like, he's just a very versatile rider. And I think that coming from a track, that's a really good thing as well. They get a bit of exposure there as well. But yeah, Israel are going to need a bit of a uh, overhaul to get back to the World Tour, in my opinion. I think to some extent they've been. Um humbled in, in terms of like they got a world tour license kind of out of nowhere in 2020 no one was expecting it um they didn't perform to be honest at the world tour level and now now that now they're at the pro continental level it's like oh, okay we're back where we should be we are a pro continental team i mean they've got access to a lot of big races uh including the grand tours uh which will give them a decent stage to sort of do something they're a team that have been riding at the world tours they know how world tour racing works maybe they'll find their groove their rhythm at the world tour races to come but i mean it's just it's it's not really a, a squad with a roster that's lighting my fire to be honest i think lots of destiny over this weekend in particular have proved that they're more worthy of a world tour license than um than israel mm. but you never know i'm very excited about a rumor i heard this week that domenico pozzo vivo might be moving there who doesn't have a contract at the moment so the g dog coming up as well i think it's uh i think it's a really promising lead for Pozzo. He hasn't been given another contract. I'd love to see him racing. I think he wants to carry on racing. So maybe maybe that'll be a lifeline for Israel. I mean, I think that Israel could get back to the World Tour. I think especially if you consider Astana, for example, right? Consider, like, take Astana. Outside of Lutsenko, who on that team is going to be bringing in UCI points? Mark Cavendish. Because Mark Cavendish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> True. I was, okay, yeah. That's a fair point, Cal. But, like, they lost Lopez, so they've lost that GC accumulator of points and if Israel were to make some 
actual smart signings. You know, Dylan Turns was a, a decent-ish one, in my opinion. But if they made a couple more of those signings, they could, in my opinion, in the next round of like the next three-year cycle, they could, in my opinion, bump Astana down. I think, um, realistically. I don't know. I don't, I don't really see a pathway for them. They have an advantage over other teams, which I don't think is necessarily fair, that they have probably one of the biggest sort of Walter invitation loads. Their inbox is flooded with, with Walter race invitations, which does give them scope to to gain more points. Maybe maybe that, that gives them a chance to go up. But I don't know. I think there are teams with more sustainable models. Uno X is one. Uno X with good good bunch of sprinters. Vardan Schultz winning. Um, Rasmus Till is a really strong classic contender. And then you got the Johannesson twins or brothers who I think are just really going to hit the ground running uh, this year. That they see more sustainable. Total and Elshi, they're automatically invited to all the classics anyway. And the team has as well a couple of really decent climbers. You can get top tens in French races. They also naturally go to many French classics that offer our points. These races like the Tour de, Tour de Mirabel, Tour de N'importe où, whatever. Well, like you, you can just kind of raise up the, the, these points with, with wins there. They have the opening for that. So then you have some of the, I mean, Lotte Destiny, Dali is going to be a cash cow in terms of points. Uh, and they also have a, a couple of other really good young riders um, coming through as well. So I think other teams have had more sustainable models. Yes, Israel have their dev team, have brought through a couple of good, good guys, but. I, I don't really see a pathway for them getting back onto the world tour unless there's a there's a big upheaval or changing of the rules. I don't see it happening. They won't be happy with that. Well, finishing on that love letter to Israel Premier Tech, 